by popular demand. I've had so many people uh, express interest in this mouthpiece, buying it, playing it, um, and it really is a wonder. Meyer New York, this should be a true flex facing, but it is not. Uh, it is very early. Uh, this is all original. There are a lot of Meyer uh, hallmarks and signatures in that tip rail and side rails that look like New York Myers for alto saxophone, tenor saxophone. Um, uh, the ligature slides on there, uh, kind of like a modern Theo Wani. Uh, and the ligature itself looks a lot like an auto link ligature. There's the little stamp saying up. What's so funny is Meyer was ahead of auto link by 50 years because it wasn't until the 80s that auto link started marking their ligatures, which side went up. Meyer, uh, Meyer was ahead of them, and um, there's the ligature, four contact points, <clears throat> similar again to auto link style, very cool. But what's really interesting about this mouthpiece, other than how well it plays with a very thin reed, and the fact that I can get amazing control over Altissimo with a Rico 2.5, when I generally play like a V12 3.5 or 4, um, is the fact that there's no throat shape it's all just round it's just all scooped out and you would think how in the world would that achieve any focus and a lot of it is just from the baffle it's not a step baffle or anything it's just a it's just higher and this is what's amazing um my favorite classical alto sound was uh vincent j abato and he uh played on a Meyer Bros Trueflex, New York Meyer Bros Trueflex 3M. Uh, no square interior or resistance kind of choke interior, just focus from the baffle. And it's amazing how, obviously this is a niche jazz clarinet mouthpiece, but that doesn't sound too stuffy. It has an incredible cut entirely from the baffle, not from the chamber. The chamber is just free blowing and it achieves all of its focus from the baffle. A lost art form baffles.